All right then, welcome to my first ever Galea VODs video. It's going to be a series of VODs from the Pug season, right? So my tanking Pug season. We will be putting up everything that goes on the main channel. So if there's anything shown on the main channel, I will essentially be putting VODs on here. I'm only going to do the 10 to 20 keys. I'm not going to show the lobby ones. Essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the routes. I'll go through some high level pointers about the route, and then it'll just be raw footage, which you can jump to and learn from. The reason why I'm putting this up is just in case people want to see how I'm pulling. It has no real benefit other than that. I'm not going to be giving any you know, major commentary. All of the commentary will be in the main channel, basically. I might go over some of the... The mistakes, say if there's a big series of deaths or I make some major mistakes, I might have some minor commentary in. But mostly this is just going to be raw VODs for you to go and have a look at and basically investigate if you want to. It should be there for those players that want to get into tanking. And if you want to see how I'm pulling, when I'm pulling, that's what these are for really. There's no real entertainment value. So with that being said, let's have a quick look through the route then. The first area, so I always go to Granith first. I pulled this massive patrol. The reason why I pull this patrol is because if you go and do this, say, Lance Master pack here, you're probably going to butt pull this patrol. So go pull this, lust it. You want to basically use lust here so that you definitely have lust back up for the second boss, for the Raging Tempest boss. Yeah. So go here, pull this patrol first and lust it. Then just go around all of the individual packs. You do also want to pull this patrol. There's no real worry about butt pulling this because it's actually quite a tight circle around the boss. However, what normally happens is you kill this, you kill the first Lance Master pack, you kill this Lance Master pack, and then this pack lines up quite nicely next to it. So you can just go and pull it. If it's not, don't worry, just go and pull this pack and then pull this patrol afterwards. This is the rough order that I would do it in, but you could also say, do this, do this, then do the patrol, then do this pack. Anything works. Don't worry too much about it. The only trash in this area, by the way, that does any damage, I think is the war spears. So the stab goes out on the range players and then the P is cast is a bleed on yourself. Just watch out for that bleed. Otherwise, there's not much to really account for in here. Make sure that the Lance Masters aren't getting pulled around all over the place because they do cleaving strikes, right? So basically all of their melees hit in front of them. So you don't want to be cleaving the melees with it. But genuinely, that area is pretty free. Moving on to the second area then, we literally just go around everything, pulling one pack at a time. The double pull, which I suggest here, is to pull these two Storm Shields onto this pack. And I would always come here first. The reason is, usually what happens is everyone sends all of the cooldowns into Granith. And then as their boss is dying, you're probably going to be saving cooldowns again. So when you've got a big set of cooldowns, what do you want to do? You want to try and do a double pull. So this is why you come here. If you don't have cooldowns, or if you think the rest of your party doesn't have cooldowns, instead do this pull first, then do the Waterfall pack. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter. Everything else in here is just one pack at a time. The major tank damage comes from these arc blades. You can stop the arcing strike cast if you would like to. The boss, no real damage. Make sure you have a dispel. If you have a dispel, you're going to be fine. On to the third area then. This is where we pick up most of our percentage and has the by far the most difficult pulls in it. So... The first double pull that we do is we take these birds with this pull. You can also take these birds with this pull. Either of these works. In fact, you can do it with this pull as well. I think they're a bit harder to grab over here because you're also, if you get in these frontals, potentially going to pull this patrol. So I suggest trying to get them into these two packs. Basically, you just watch as they're flying around above. You can aggro them very, very easily. You can even just aggro them if you're just on top of the hill. If you're not on top of the hill, then you won't but pull them. But if you're just on top of the hill, you're just automatically going to aggro them. So take these three with here. The next pack, exactly the same. All of these are individual pulls. Once you've cleared out the four hills, right? So you've cleared out the four silver harvesters. Go and proc the RP from the boss. And then come back and do this pull. This pull is essentially a patrol that runs right on top of another one. It has two death speakers in, which is a bit annoying, but I'd always advise doing these two. It's basically free count. There's not that much damage that comes out of them. Then I'd go and do boss, lust the boss again if it's up. After you've killed the boss, come back and do this pack. This pack is huge and you need cooldowns for. Again, most of the time people are going to have cooldowns after a boss. They won't use them when the boss has got like 2 mil HP left. That's typically what happens. Sometimes it doesn't, but I would advise doing it this way. If you go and do this massive pull and then do the boss, everyone's going to want to have used cooldowns into this and they're not going to have them at the boss. So I would prefer to try and get cooldowns into this, basically. I think it makes much more sense. Again, tank damage in this area. 
The Warriors actually do quite a bit of tank damage and they also have a Mortal Strike effect. So you need to be wary of that, right? It's nothing too bad, but it's this pack here which does the most damage. You have to have cooldowns for it. Make sure you're playing around cooldowns for pack 19. Otherwise, it's pretty free in this area. There is a bit of boss damage coming out up here. It's the Brutalized Cast from Maruk. Again, just make sure you're trying to use at least some form of defensive into Brutalize and you'll be absolutely fine. On Fortified Weeks, there's not even that much damage that comes out of them. Make sure you're tanking them on top of each other, right? You don't, you never want these to be split. If they split apart and they get Ancestral Bond, then there is a significant, significant amount of damage that's going out on the group because of these quick shots. So that's the main mechanic you have to play around. Yeah. Otherwise, everything else is pretty free. Last boss... There is a lot of damage coming out of the Rending Strike and Savage Strikes in the first phase, and then also on the Conductive Strike in the second phase, although that can get dispelled, and it's not too bad as long as it's getting dispelled. So if the heal is playing well, this is fine. There's not much damage on this pack. The route's pretty free, though. Try and have a, a, a look through this VOD if you want to, and you want to see the, the actual implementation of me playing this route. I do change it slightly, like I said, I pull these two Storm Shields into this pack here. I advise against that now because these Storm Shields also do a lot of damage. So both the Arc Blades and the Storm Shields, if you've got four of them, the Storm Shield uh, buff can be going off as well. So just, just pull them into this. It makes way more sense to do this pull than, than that double pull. Anyway, hopefully you enjoy the VOD. There might be some commentary if there's any deaths. Otherwise, it'll just be plain footage that you can go and pick through. Peace.
four, three. Queen has used a large song to conjure an avatar of the storm. Blasphemy! The storm must be quiet, and the elemental within it defeated, before Clan O'Neill can join the Khan of Muska. Their primalist allies have placed totems that protect the Four, three.
four, three. Three, two, one.
four, three, two. Four, three, two. Alright then, a zero death run, no real mistakes or anything like that, so nothing to really commentate over, so I'll leave it there. Hopefully we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.